so our title of our talk is uh, don't dash k your services on k8 or a less cryptic title is uh, uh, our journey of how we rolled out TLS for microservices on our Kubernetes cluster. So I'm Tilotama, this is my colleague uh, Akshay, we are from VMware. So a little bit of context about what we do, we are from the production engineering team in uh, VMware's uh, cloud management business unit. Uh, at the time when we were de developing these frameworks, we were basically supporting our uh, product called VRA Cloud. What VRA Cloud does is it allows customers to have a single pane of glass for automating their workflows across environments, whether it is between clouds or between on-prem and cloud. So at the time we started about thinking about Kubernetes and TLS, we wanted to, to take VRA, which is our on-prem product, and convert it to a SaaS product. That's when we started thinking about uh, Kubernetes, TLS. And uh, that time our first iteration was on Kubernetes 1.5. Right now our prod runs on Kubernetes 1.9. And in a matter of weeks, we are going to move to uh, Amazon EKS's uh, 1.13. Uh, right now we run everything on AWS EC2 uh, nodes. Uh, we have around 40 microservices in production uh, and we support around 300 developers SREs across three geolocations. And we have around 700 CI CD pipeline runs in a day. The reason for including this statistic is because uh, any framework, any solution we develop, we want it to be seamlessly integrated with our CI CD pipelines. So that's one of the goals we have as a team. So uh, let's get into what is TLS. So full, uh, full disclosure here, we are not security experts. Uh, we are ops uh, people. So we are going to focus on the operational aspects of TLS. So TLS stands for tra uh, uh, transport layer security. And it does two things. It does encryption and it does uh, identification. So let's focus on encryption. So I'm not going to get into the details of how it does encryption using uh, public key, private keys, because I'm not a security expert and there are algorithms that do that, like RSA, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to focus more on the mechanics of how it happens. So let's say you want to, your browser wants to connect over uh, TLS or uh, SSL to google.com. So first it's going to send an SSL hello message to the browser, uh, to the server. The server then responds to it by sending a, a valid certificate and a public key. Then the client is going to validate this certificate and public key. Then it's going to generate a symmetric key, which it's going to encrypt with the public key and send it back to the browser, uh, sorry, back to the server. And now the server uh, decrypts the, the symmetric key using the same key, uh, same public key, and uh, use this symmetric key to encrypt all future traffic between the uh, client and the server. So that's roughly how encryption in TLS works. Uh, now let's focus a little bit on the identification. So remember in step three in the previous slide, I said that the client is going to validate. So what does it do at that time? Because uh, just having encrypted communication is not going to be enough. So uh, for example, if you go on websites, uh, you see the broken lock symbol saying that uh, what the browser is going to, uh, trying to tell us is that, you know what, the traffic is encrypted, but I really don't trust the entity who is uh, at the other end, who is sending you all that traffic. So we don't want that. We want TLS to also vouch for the identity of the web server with whom we are sharing our credit card details and all that. So let's say, uh, how, how does TLS do that? So all companies we, which uh, want to use TLS communication, they uh, use a third, a third party uh, called a certificate authority or a CA for short. For example, google.com is going to ask a CA that, hey, I have a web server and I want all, uh, all browsers to trust me. What do I do? So the CA is going to just, uh, ask all sorts of questions to Google. Let's say, what kind of a web server is this? Where is this company located? And uh, it's going to take all this information and create what is called as a root CA certificate, sign it. And this root CA certificate is going to be installed at the server, at the, in the web server. 
Uh, in practical uh, life, we also have intermediate CAs also which sign uh, intermediate CA certificates and the whole chain with the root CA and the intermediate CA, uh, the whole chain is called the chain of trust. Now when the browser gets this chain of trust, now it, it can say that, okay, I trust the web server and now I'm going to uh, send it encrypted data back. So that's how the identification uh, aspects of TLS work. So we kind of begin to understand why TLS is so hard to do in a microservices Kubernetes type of environment because we have so many microservices and so many endpoints that we want this uh, chain of trust to be installed at each and every endpoint. So that is the first challenge. Then we have multiple environments like we have development, pre-prod, staging, prod. We want separate trust boundaries for each of them. So we don't want the same root CA to be used across all of them because that compromises the security. Then each, uh, most enterprise companies have their own custom CA signing and certificate signing processes. And any framework that you develop for TLS is, needs to integrate with these processes. And uh, certificate renewal is always, almost always a calendar event. You have to remember to switch out all the old certificates with the new ones and do that in tandem. Otherwise, you are looking at potential downtime. So when, uh, back when a few years ago, three, four years ago, when we started on our SaaS journey and our Kubernetes journey, our TLS problem statement looked like this. We wanted encrypted communication between microservices using TLS. We wanted this framework to also distribute and manage our TLS certificates. Uh, we wanted it to be applicable for our uh, service environments which run Docker containers over Kubernetes. And we wanted this framework to be highly fault tolerant, uh, highly available and fault tolerant. So this is what we set up with, uh, started out with. And our first attempt looked like this. So we developed something, uh, our team developed uh, Diploma version one, uh, which is our certificates authority. It's able to sign root CA and intermediate CA certificates. Uh, it's also able to dole out certificates on the fly as required over a Python REST API. And uh, it's built on top of Vault and Console. And um, uh, the this is how we provision the certificates, but how do we distribute them? So we, at the time of the, uh, when we were uh, thinking about this, uh, we had a bunch of Python scripts that were used to deploy our microservices in different environments. So we chose to embed this diploma client code in, uh, in these Python uh, scripts. So for example, these, uh, 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 let's say I want to deploy a Kafka server. So, uh, so this deploy script would go to diploma v1, fetch the certificate, create a trust store. All this logic was embedded in the uh, Python deployment script. So clearly we had some issues with uh, TLS attempt 1.0. And the first uh, problem was with Diploma V1 itser itself. It had some design flaws. For example, it could only generate one root CA and uh, that could be used to generate only one intermediate CA. So clearly when we need different trust boundaries for different environments, it's not going to be very secure. So our team developed Diploma V2, which had the ability to, uh, to provision multiple root CAs. Each of them could provision multiple intermediate CAs. But how do we get to Diploma V2? Uh, because our uh, distribution, uh, certificate distribution infrastructure was also pretty flawed. So as, uh, as I said, we had chosen to embed the diploma client code in each of the deploy scripts. Now what we have to do is take this code out that talked to diploma v1, put more code in that talked to diploma v2. So what in the future if we want to move to diploma v3, we are faced with a similar process or we just don't want to use diploma at all, we want to use vault directly. Again, we are looking at a similar process. And remember, we have to switch all these, uh, do the switcheroo in uh, almost in tandem, uh, because otherwise uh, some, uh, some services won't be able to talk to each other because they have invalid certificates. So, uh, so that was a huge problem for us. Also at the time, we were pr getting pretty tired of our Python scripts. We wanted to move to Helm and uh, our Python scripts were getting uh, really unmaintainable. And so we didn't want to put more or new code into them. We wanted to move away from, uh, from them. So that was the challenge. So in summary, 
uh, these were the problems that we had that uh, we had problems in diploma v1 uh, also diploma v1 was not on kubernetes it was directly running on ec2 so we had a separate set of scripts and infrastructure to manage uh, diploma v1 which was not having parity with our uh, 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 other infrastructure that is used to uh, manage our regular microservices on Kubernetes. So, we, that was another reason why we wanted to move to Diploma V2. And uh, uh, distributing certificates again had problems. Each service had deployment code talking to Diploma. We want to move towards Helm but cannot. And also uh, renewing certs, again the renewal was, uh, the onus was on each individual service. And when we do the switcheroo to Diploma V2, we also have to think about renew, uh, changing these scripts to use Diploma V2 as well. So we developed a uh, framework called Chancellor and now Akshay, my colleague is going to take over the re remaining presentation. So uh, now uh, we have a new certificate management system and uh, the task at hand is to move all the services from using the V1 version of Diploma to the V2 version of Diploma. So uh, the new version of Diploma has its own changes to API and uh, changes to the uh, authentication and authorization. So if you see the, the scope of the change which we need to make, um, as Tilo mentioned, we have around 40 plus services in production. And uh, so these are on multiple Kubernetes clusters in different regions. And each service has its own specific uh, certificate configuration like the certificate authority to choose uh, to use and uh, credentials to talk to Diploma. And this, this configuration uh, varies per environment. And each service has its own SLA defined with its own uh, release cycle and pipelines. And most of our services talk to each other um, within a single cluster uh, on um, MTLS, using MTLS. So given this context, like um, uh, we as an ops team now has challenged to roll out the change uh, without uh, causing any issues with the services, without causing any downtime, without impacting the SLAs, and also uh, make minimal changes so that we don't affect the feature development of services. So uh, where do we begin to make this change? If you see how uh, uh, services use diploma, each service uh, uh, has their own deployment scripts and during deployment time uh, they consume Diploma API uh, using the auth and creates a, or uh, gets the certificate from Diploma V1 and uh, creates a Kubernetes secret that's mounted on the pods and also each service has its own Jenkins job that is configured to run periodically to check whether the, the, the certificate is about to be expired and renews it. So, um, so given the scope of the change and uh, uh, given the existing configuration. So we realized we need to standardize on um, the, uh, some of the ways like how services access diploma so that we can better manage the tokens or access credentials uh, that are used to talk to diploma and um, um, standardize on the naming of the secret so that uh, we can easily debug any issues related to certs and also um, centralize the CA information uh, so that we can uh, or we can control who gets to access the CA information uh, of, for, 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 for uh, the, uh, the certificate authority information that is used by services in a cluster. So uh, this led us to develop Chancellor. It's a, it's a Kubernetes controller that's uh, deployed on all the clusters where we have services. So it's the same, it's similar to the deployment control that comes with uh, um, Kubernetes, like it watches for all the uh, the, the deployment controller watches for the deploy objects and um, uh, for example, depending on the replicas field, it ensures that like uh, those many number of pods are running on the system on the, in the cluster. So similar to the deployment controller, Chancellor is a custom controller that watches for both or that watches for deployment stateful sets and daemon sets and uh, it looks for the certificate config within the like within those objects and talks to diploma and uh, fetches the uh, certificates. And the certificate config looks similar to this where uh, it's part of um, uh, the spec. Uh, it's an annotation that's part of the spec and it contains the certificate authority to choose and also the common name for that certificate. So whenever Chancellor sees this annotation, uh, which is part of the uh, spec, it uh, based on the certificate authority, it uses proper uh, um, authentication credentials to talk to diploma and fetch the proper secret or a proper cert. And it, uh, Chancellor creates a Kubernetes secret uh, using this cert that's uh, mounted on the pods. 
So using this approach, Chancellor, we are able to control all the certificates that are um, used by uh, services uh, in a cluster or in multiple uh, environments. And uh, using this approach, we are able to define multiple interfaces like the cert interface which we saw. It's, uh, it defines on how services can actually request cert. So that, uh, like the annotation way mechanism, which has all the uh, information on the certificates to request. And uh, the, CA info, the CA interface defines on all the certificate authorities that are used by services in a cluster. It contains like the uh, CA name and the credentials to talk to diploma. And the secret interface defines on how uh, services can uh, consume these uh, certificates, like it contains the path at which the, uh, the certificates are mounted on the uh, file system on the pod. And also the keys inside the secret, like the uh, root cert, the, the chain, uh, or the private key. So use, using these interfaces, we are able to um, define how services can actually request cert and uh, consume the certificates um, in any cluster. So now, uh, no, um, after the standardization, now uh, the task is to move all the services from using V1 version of diploma to V2 version, meaning like to, uh, to move from the existing certificate authority to use the new certificate authority. That's, let's say it's V2. So the, let, if you see the certificates that are issued by new version of diploma, that diploma V2, um, diploma V2 comes with its own self-signed root and uh, all the certificates that are issued by diploma V2 are signed by the self-signed root. And um, since the new root is uh, uh, different from the existing one, all the services that are using the V1 version of CA, uh, they don't trust the certificates that are issued by this diploma V2. And uh, if the change f of the rollout is not coordinated well, like we could end up in a state in a cluster where uh, some of the services are uh, using uh, on V1 CA and some are using V2 CA. And, uh, uh, during the SL handshake, uh, the client may not have proper chain of trust to validate the certificates that are sent by the server. So clearly there's, uh, there are issues with, uh, the, the, this leads to issues with the communication and this, lead, uh, this will lead to outage and it will impact the SLA of services. And uh, uh, so in order to solve this problem, uh, we went with the expand contract pattern of the rollout. Um, meaning uh, we, uh, so before the expansion phase, we onboard all, all the services to use uh, V1 version of the CA uh, using the uh, certificates that are issued by Chancellor. And services will consume all the certificates using the secret interface that we defined earlier. And once, all we, uh, once we onboard all the services to use Chancellor and use the V1 version of the CA, in the next phase, uh, we update Chancellor to, um, have the new CA information. Since the, the CA interface which we defined earlier contains all the CAs that are used by services in a cluster, so we append the new uh, uh, CA information to the already existing secret, CA secret. So the multiple CA configuration looks similar to this. So the name of the CA is same for both the cases. Uh, uh, so Chancellor decides or prioritizes on which version of the CA to choose when it sees a request from the services. And once using this uh, multiple CA uh, or multi expanded CA config, whenever a chancellor uh, you, uh, sees a uh, uh, request for the certificates, so chancellor issues um, certificates that are signed by the V1 version of the CA and also it issues a chain of certs, like it has, it issues uh, 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 V1 version of the CA and also V2 version of the CA and V1 version of the root and V2 version of the root. And once all the, services are onboarded to use this expanded CA, meaning all the services, if, uh, when, uh, when they have uh, the secret with uh, all the information of um, certificates related to both the versions of the diploma, um, in, the, in the next phase, in the expansion phase, we prioritize Chancellor to use the V2 version of the CA, meaning now uh, when, uh, when Chancellor uh, sees a uh, request, from, request on certificates, Chancellor issues certificates that are signed by V2 version of the CA, and if we compare the previous state which we had earlier where some of the service are on uh, the V1 version and some service are on V2 version, since now the client has uh, the trust chain to validate all the certificates uh, that are sent by the server, will not see any issues related to search. 
or we're not seeing any issues related to communications. And uh, in the next phase, once once we update all the services to use the expanded CA, and or uh, once we update all the services to use the V2 version of the CA, the new version from Diploma V2, we completely remove the V1 config from Chancellor, and this will update all the services to only use the V2 version of the certs that are uh, issued by Diploma V2, and we'll, we can completely remove or we can this will update all the services to not use the V1 version of the certs. So using this approach, we are able to roll out the change with not only without uh, causing any um, issues with the services, but also the change is more aligned with the release cycle of all the services and having a better centralized uh, control by ops team. And some of the other features which we rolled out with this is cert renewal. Since the uh, chancellor controls all the certificates that are uh, issued by uh, are issued in a cluster, so it has better control uh, to renew those. Like um, it scans for all the secrets that are that has the certs and checks if, if it can renew it and it will update the secret, info, secret with the new cert. So we found this approach as a better way compared to the previous approach where uh, we ran Jenkins jobs that's, uh, that ran outside the cluster and accessed the certs that are in the cluster. And also to um, improve the debugging time, um, we improved the logging by uh, emitting Kubernetes events on uh, cert related activity like uh, cert crea uh, we create a new Kubernetes event on um, um, like cert create uh, activity and uh, renew activity and also any issues uh, if there are any issues talking to diploma API we create an error event and also we use wavefront to monitor our complete stack like all the services and uh, service uh, uh, infra so we push custom metrics on um, onto wavefront so that we can better alert on cert related activity uh, and we can better monitor all the cert related events and some of the other solutions uh, which are available now um, to manage all the certificates uh, on Kubernetes is Cert Manager. So Cert Manager uh, uses a different approach to uh, configure the uh, the certificate authorities and the certificates inside the cluster by the custom resource approach. Uh, apart from Let's Encrypt, uh, it also has support to self sensors and also the vault integration. So, but by the by, uh, so when we started this project like early last year, uh, Cert Manager was not having that feature um, available. And also, we needed the multi-CA support um, for our solution so that uh, uh, we can better trans tra uh, make transition from one CA to other CA without causing any issues. And also, uh, other um, popular solution is Istio. So this takes um, another approach with, where um, uh, so, um, services use Sidecar to um, talk to the other Sidecar with the MTLS, and uh, certificates are issued by Citadel component. And the... Um, the um, authorization authentication is quite different. Uh, here it uses service account based authorization authentication and also the service name, the service DNS name authentication. So this, is, this, is, this will be a better approach when you're already using Envoy to, or already using Istio for your uh, uh, communications related uh, uh, in, uh, within your uh, cluster. It's all, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Akshay and Tilo. So it's time for questions and answers. Uh... Hello. Hi. I was just curious if any of those components, the Chancellor and Diploma, are they available as open source, or is it a proprietary VMware? Uh, yeah, so they are not open source, but um, uh, uh, the uh, other solutions which I mentioned, the Cert Manager, Right. It's quite similar to the uh, solutions available. Okay. So just a story of how you've done it. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Another applause for Tilo. Thank and you. Thank you.